Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start up a simple server using Express. Now, you can do this with Node, but it's going to be easier using Express, and you're going to see that throughout the application, Express is going to be very dominant in your code. Okay, so um, right now I'm just working in a root folder. Okay, so what you want to do is go ahead and create a file and call it server.js. Okay, and I'm just going to use my command prompt to do this. <clears throat> All right. And then you're going to go ahead into your command prompt and you're going to find the location, um, the directory you're working out of, right? And you're going to type in npm init. Okay. Now remember, in order for this to work, you need to have Node installed. All right. Um, I'm not going to make a video on how to install Node because there's a lot of them out there, and the website itself is straightforward. Just search Node.js on Google, all right? But once you get it involved, uh, or I mean installed, you're going to be able to use the Node Package Manager, all right? Um, and in case you don't know if you have Node installed, you just type in Node version. Oops, actually it's Node V, I think. There it goes, all right? And it'll tell you what version. It's not found. You don't have it installed. You can't use NPM. <clears throat> Alright, so npm init, that's how you start your node application. Okay, um, so you do that first, and it's going to prompt you for a set of options. This is basically a configuration for your application. I'm going to use all the defaults except for the server file. Alright, and I'll show you what I mean in a second here. Okay, it's going to ask you to name the application. I'm just going to name it mean tutorial. Um, version, I'll use the default description. I'm just going to put uh, mean stack application. Entry point, all right, and it automatically detected server.js, which we created. By default, it's going to try to create this one, all right, but I like to use server.js. That's why I created it in the first place um, because it makes more sense when you're reading it. Test command, we're not going to use that right now. We're not going to use a git repository keywords mean stack okay and author me uh, no license and do you want to create this yes okay so now we've initiated our application so if you go into directory you see a new file called package.json all right and it has all of our configuration settings okay so the next thing we want to do is go back into our server and we're going to go ahead and call express. All right. The way we do that is we create a variable, name it express, and type in require express. All right. Now, um, this if you go on Google and just type in express or just even go to expressjs.com, everything that I'm going to be typing is here, right? And you just saw that right here. Okay, so to speed up the process, I'm just going to walk you through it. I'm going to tell you what I'm typing, but I'm not going to go into huge detail. Like I said, if you want to read the documentation, here it is. All right. Okay. Now, all right. Now, back in your command prompt, you want to go ahead and use command npm start. All right. And then you want to type in the name of the file that runs the server. Okay. Go ahead, enter. All right, now it's not going to run properly, right? And it says right here, error, cannot find module express because we did not install it, okay? So in a uh, command prompt window in the main directory, you want to go ahead and type in npm install express save, right? Just like that. And that's going to go ahead and install express for us, okay? All right, there you go. And if you go back to the server, just go ahead and start it again. There you go. Ran perfectly fine, right? Now, we haven't started the actual server configuration, um, so it's just going to drop like that, okay? But I'll show you exactly how to do that, okay? So first, you want to go ahead and invoke express into a variable called app, okay? Like I said, this is all right here. There you go. Okay, so I'm not just based on experience. I'm actually just copying it right from documentation. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead and type in app dot listen, and then provide a port for it. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in 8080, and then I'm going to hit save. 
back at the command prompt and go ahead and start the server again. And you're gonna see this time it doesn't drop. There you go. It's just hanging. That means the server is running. Now I like to add a little bit more configuration so that I know that it's running so that I get a message of some kind. All right. So if you go back, what you can do is if you type in comma function, all right, and then this function is just going to create a console log message that says running the server. Okay, very simple. Okay, so now we're just going to hit Control C, terminate batch job. Yes, all right, and then we're just going to start it again. And there you go, running the server. Now we know we're running the server. Okay. Now going back here, okay. Some some uh, some websites you deploy this application to, for example, Heroku, which is a really popular one, um, require a little bit more configuration with the port. Okay. One way you can do that is like this. You type in process dot environment dot port or eighty eighty, and what that does is it tells your server, hey, use eighty eighty server or if the environment to which you're deploying to has a specific server that it requires, use that instead. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to create a simple um, route. Um, and we're going to test it in the browser to make sure that it's working properly. Okay. And the way you do that is so simple. It's app.get. All right. And... Then we're going to go ahead and use slash for default, okay? And then it's going to be a function, and it's going to take in a request and respond with, let's see, send hello world. Okay. So what this is saying is when the user puts in a get request, and they do that by entering the default, okay? So slash means default. So it's going to call a function. Upon request, we're going to respond with sending hello world to the browser. All right, so we're just going to test this, okay? So now that we've changed our configuration, we'll go back to the server, close it out, and start it again. All right, very simple. We're just going to go to our browser and type in localhost 8080. And there you go, hello world. Very simple, okay? And let's go back. Okay, so we don't actually need this route. Um, that was just for test purposes. Now, one thing you can notice is that we keep having to restart the server every time something changes, okay? So I'm going to show you a way to fix this without having to deal with that um, annoyance, all right? So go ahead and stop your server and go ahead and type in npm install global node mod. All right, just like that. You're not going to hit save, okay, um, because we're just installing this on our machine here globally. Okay, and then go ahead and hit enter, all right. Now, once that's done installing, okay, go ahead and type in node mon and then the name of the file. All right, Oops, typed it in wrong. And there you see the server is running on only this time it's a little bit different. All right, and I'm going to show you what the difference is. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put running on the server on port and concatenate it into. I'm just going to type in. Um, actually, what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to cut this out. All right, and I'm going to make a variable called port, and I'm going to assign it to that. Right, and then here. I'm going to say listen in on port on that variable, okay? And then here I'm just going to type in listening or running the server on port, port, okay? Then I'm going to hit save, and the server automatically restarts. And see, there's my message running on the server port 8080, okay? The reason I did that into that variable because if I change this, right? Let's say I change this to 3000 and hit save. Well, there you go, running the server on port 33. 3000, all right, automatically. Okay, and that's why I configured it that way. Okay, so we're just going to go back to the way it was. So, one additional configuration that I want to add is 
um, a middleware called Morgan. Now you can easily Google this and get information on it, um, but I'm just going to um, run right into it. All right, so we're going to create a new variable called Morgan and require just like we did before Morgan. Okay, and you're going to see the server is going to shoot you an error because it cannot find it because we did not install it. So go ahead and go back into the directory npm install Morgan and save. Okay, just like that. Okay, now back in our code, all right, we're going to go ahead and type in app.use, and that's how you use all middlewares in Express, okay? And basically what middleware means is um, the application is running this before uh, something else, or in this case, the rest of the code, okay? Now we're going to just type in Morgan, just like that, okay? Um, now the method that we want to use is dev, all right? Okay, here you go, just what we typed in now. And then it has all the different methods. And as you see, dev is color coded, um, and that's why I like it. Um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean right now. Okay, so let's go back to our server and make sure everything's running okay. And as you see, it restarted once it installed Morgan. So now what's going to happen is every time a request is made to the server, um, it's going to log it for you so that you know what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and create another route again. This time we're going to type in home function request respond um, respond with hello from home. Okay, and hit save. Make sure the server's still running. It restarted. Okay, so up here we're going to type in. Now I tried. I tried going to the default location, but we deleted that route, so it just cannot get. But that's not what Morgan's doing. This is what Morgan is doing. You see how it logged the request right here? Okay. And so now if I type in slash home, as you can see, hello from home, and you go back to the command prompt, there it is, get slash home. So every request you make is going to get logged. All right. So go ahead and delete that. We're not going to need that route. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, connect to the Mongo database, okay? So uh, make sure you go ahead and install Mongo database on your own. I'm not going to show you how to install it in this video because it's quite lengthy. Um, but I already have Mongo database running in, in my background, okay? Depending on your operating system, it'll tell you exactly what port it's listening on. So my port is listening on 27017, okay? So let's go back here, and we're going to create a new package called Mongoose, all right? And that is just a handler for Mongo Database and Node.js, all right? It's very easy to use. Okay, again, if we hit save, the server is going to crash because it's not found. So we go back into our directory and npm install Mongoose. And save. Easy day. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and connect. To a database, all right. Now, if you go search the Mongoose API, um, it shows you very easily how to do this, all right. And so we're just going to go ahead and copy this. Copy. Actually, we don't need this top one because we just did that. Only going to need this one. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this is going to be the name of whatever database you run, you're going to use. So for this one, I'm just going to put in tutorial. All right. Now remember, when listening on Mongo database, you want to use the port that you're connected to. So like I was saying, mine is connected on 2017. So that's just depending on your configuration. That's usually the default, but that's for Windows and Linux. It may be different on other systems. Okay. So. We're just going to type in a colon 27017. Right. Now, if you go back to the Mongoose website, it tells you here um, how to check um, if it's connected or not. Okay, because right now, if we hit save, we're not going to get anything on the server. It's not going to tell us if we're connected or not. Okay. Um, so, for example, I'm going to go over here to my Mongo database and I'm just going to cancel it out. Okay. And as you see, nothing crashed on the server okay that's a problem we want to know if it's not working okay and so the way we do that is um, you can follow this example here um, however I do it a little bit differently 
all you really need to do is type in a new function and then say console.log um, actually what you want to do is say if error then console log not connected to the database plus the error okay else if it's connected then just type in connected well, let's say successfully connected to mongodb okay so now what this is saying is hey connect to this database through this port if there's an error then log hey not connected to database error if there is no error then just say connect to database now there's a few other things that you can do um, for example you can type in throw error and what this does is it actually crashes the server <clears throat> I'll leave that up to you on how you want to do it um, I don't really quite know um, which one is better option um, but for me this is enough okay um, so what we're going to do is it, we're just going to hit save. Um, in the function, you actually want to go ahead and pass in error and then hit save. And there you go. It says not connected to database, Mongo error, failed to connect to server. And it even tells you what server it was trying to connect to. All right. Now we're gonna go, I'm going to go ahead and start my Mongo database. Okay. And as you'll see, I'm going to go ahead and hit save on this to restart the server or actually I could have just typed in RS I think and there you go successfully connected to Mongo database and running the server on port 8080 alright um, what you can do also is you can just take this whole configuration and put it in a separate file if you want to um, basically the goal is you don't want this to get too cluttered but I think so far we're doing fine okay so that about wraps it up for this video. You've successfully started your server, okay, and I've created a, a sample route for you to know how to use. Um, so next, we're going to go ahead and start creating our user model for when users register.